In this video, we're going to take these shapes and we're going to scatter them across our ground surface. And to do that, we're going to use a node called the Shape Splatter node. So let's start by creating this node. I'm going to hit the space bar, do a search for Shape, and here we have our Shape Splatter. Let's left click to create this node. Now, if we take a look at the inputs here, uh, we can see the first input that this takes is a background height. Well, we already have that. You can see here we have the result of this blend. This is what we've been working on in previous videos. And the output of this blend is being piped into our normal ambient occlusion and base material. So we're going to use this as our background height. So I'm going to take this output and just plug that right into the background height input of the shape splatter. Now, the next input that we have here is an actual pattern. If we look at the properties here for the shape splatter, you can see there's a pattern input slider. So we can increase this value, allowing us to input multiple patterns. So here I'm going to set this to a value of 3. Now if we take a look, we have three different patterns. The reason why we would do this is because it's going to give us a more random or organic look to our ground surface. If we were to have just a single shape and just scatter that across our surface, it'd be pretty easy to spot that it's the same shape just being replicated across the surface. So here, we're able to input multiple patterns, which helps us to produce a more natural ground. So if we go back here to our slope blur, you can see that the output here looks pretty much like a texture sheet. So we have nine different patterns we can choose from. So I need to be able to select a pattern out of this that I can feed into the shape splatter. And we can do that pretty easily with a crop node. So here I'm going to hit the space bar, and I'm going to do a search for crop, and here we have this crop grayscale. So I'm going to left click to create an instance of the crop grayscale. Let's take our slope blur grayscale, and let's plug that into the crop node. Now the crop node has two outputs. One is an output, and the second is the area. So if we double click the area, you can see here in the 2D view, we can see all of the shapes. And here we have this manipulator that we can scale and reposition to select a specific shape. So what I'm going to do is just uh, scale this manipulator and so that I can select this shape here in the top right corner. So now if I come back here to this output and take a look, here you can see this is the shape that I have selected from the output of this slope blur grayscale. So what I'm going to do now is just duplicate this node. So with it selected, I can hit Control D. That will duplicate the node. Now let's go back to the area, double click the area, and let's select another shape. So here I'm just going to left click and drag on the manipulator, and I'm going to select this middle piece here. So something like that. Now let's do this one more time. Select the node, Control D. Let's move it down, double click the area, and now let's select another shape. This time here, I'm going to, I guess, choose this shape right here. Okay, so now you can see that I have three completely different types of shapes that I could feed into my shape splatter pattern inputs. So let's do that now. So we want to make sure that the output is what we're going to connect to the pattern. So let's grab this output and connect this to pattern one. Let's grab the output here of this node and connect it to pattern two and now what we're going to do is grab this output and connect this here to that pattern 3. Another helpful tip for navigating is I can actually left click, just do a single left click, and then when I move my mouse away, you can see this connection line is following my mouse. What this allows me to do now is then use my middle mouse button to pan, and you can see that connection line still following my mouse, and then I can connect this to pattern input 3. So just a navigation tip. Okay, so now we have our shapes in place. I'm just kind of reorganizing things just a little bit here so it makes visual sense of what we're working with. So now let's come over to our shape splatter. Let's double click this here so we can view the overall splatter effect in our 2D view. Now we also want to make sure that we're viewing this here in our 3D view. So what I'm going to do is just redistribute my connection line. So hold down shift, left click here, this output from the blend, and just redistribute my connection lines. Okay, so this is what we're going to be working with, and now we can see the result here of this shape splatter in our 3D view as well. Okay, so now we're going to make some changes here. So the X and Y amount is 16 by 16. I may leave it like that for now. So we don't really need to mess with the pattern anymore. Uh, you can see here the pattern distribution mode is set to random, so it's randomly distributing between these three different patterns. Of course, we could add more. 
So let's close that pattern. Let's take a look at size. So for scale, I'm going to adjust this value up. Uh, I'm probably going to, I'm just going to take this all the way to this max value of five for right now. And then I'm going to adjust this scale random. So we'll take this up to around a value of 0.9. And then here, we'll close up size. Let's come over to our position and our position random. We'll go ahead and increase this. Now, the way I'm kind of working right now, it's a little difficult to see what I'm doing because we have all of these shapes just collecting and colliding with each other. So what I'm going to do is just scroll all the way down here to this section called masking, and I'm going to increase the mask random value. So we'll set this to a value of like 0.88. Uh, here, actually, let's do this. Let's do 0.75. Okay, so now you can see some of the results of, of what I had from the values I've previously set. So for example, if we come over here to our, we'll adjust this value and you can see that, you know, again, of course, it's just a randomly adjusting the scale of some of these shapes. Okay, uh, we have our position. We've set that position random. I'll just set this all the way here to two. Let's come over here to our rotation options. And for the rotation random, I'm going to set this all the way to a value of 1. So it's randomly rotating some of these shapes. OK, let's close up position and rotation. And I want to focus now on this section for height. So the first thing we have here is this height offset. And it's set to a value of 0 by default. Now, this height offset is the altitude of the pattern. The altitude is offset relative to the background height. So that's this background height that we have here. If you leave this at a value of 0, it will sample the background height in the middle of the pattern and then use that as the base altitude. The scale will be applied after. However, we can also shift this value negative or positive. So for example, if I were to take this value here and I push this here towards a negative value, you can see that it gives me the result of lowering or pushing these shapes down into the ground surface. I can also use a height offset random to, well, randomly offset some of these values. Now another option we have in this scale, this conform to background setting. As I move this slider towards one, it's going to then conform or warp these shapes to the underlying background height. We also have the ability to skew from the background slope if we like, so we can uh, increase this value as well. So here I have an example that's going to better illustrate what's happening when we use this conform to background option. When working with height with the shape splatter node, we can work in specific real world units. So for example, you'll notice here that I have this height scale auto adjust set to true, and it's set to true by default. Now, if we come over here to materials, and I'm just going to edit this material, I've changed the scale here to be a value of 100. And the reason why I'm doing that in this particular case is because if we take a look at this primitive, in my case, I'm still using the plain high res, it is actually built at a scale of 100 units by 100 units. So the height scale for the patterns that we're feeding into the shape splatter can have a relative height scale to this background height input that we're feeding in, which in my case is just a Perlin noise. OK, so like I said, let's take a look at what this conform to background is actually doing. So once again, as I set this here to a value of 1, we can see that this conforms these pattern shapes to match the underlying slope of that background height. So here I'll just reorient this 3D view so we can get a better idea how this pyramid shape that I'm feeding in for my pattern is conforming here to the slope of that Perlin noise. Here's an example here as well. So hopefully this example here just better illustrates exactly what is happening when we apply some value to this conform to background setting. Another thing that's pretty powerful about this node, if we kind of zoom in, you can see that there's also several other inputs, such as the shape scale input. So currently, you know, let's close up height for now. Let's come back here to our size. Currently, we are adjusting our scale based on just some uniform values. However, we have this scale map multiplier slider that allows us to drive this scale effect based on some type of texture input. And so just, again, to help keep this even more kind of chaotic and random, let's do that. So I'm going to hit the space bar, and I'm going to go back here to my Perlin noise, and I'm going to create an instance of the Perlin noise. So now that I have this, I'm going to take the output of this Perlin noise, I'm going to plug that right into the shape scale input of the shape splatter node. So now let's go back here to this node, 
And let's have the scale or the size be driven by this Perlin noise by increasing the scale map multiplier. So as I start to do this, you can see the type of effect this is having here on the overall splatter. Another thing that I can do is then go back here to this Perlin noise and adjust things like my scale to get different results here as well. Okay, so now that I have this set up, of course, everything being non-destructive, let's say I can come back here to maybe this shape. I don't know if I really like this kind of hard edge shape that's showing up here. So I'm gonna come back to the area and I think what I'm going to do is maybe adjust this manipulator. I'm going to select maybe a different shape. So all I have to do is select a different shape and you can see that it's updating everything that's connected to it downstream. Again, here, let's try maybe this shape and see what this does. So this allows us to, you know, always kind of just play around with the types of results that we're getting until we can really fine tune and get something that we want. Okay, so let's go back here to the shape splatter. I'm gonna play around a little bit with my X and Y amount. So I think what I might do is maybe set this to, uh, well here, let's do uh, 17, uh, not 71, uh, 17 here by 17. And then I'm gonna go back to the shape splatter and once again, just kind of play around a little bit with this height. So let's see here, let me do my height offset to a little bit of a lower value. Let's just set that at 0.85 uh, and then maybe lower that height offset random. I could also take a look at adjusting the overall height scale. So if I start to lower that, you can see the effect here again, just updating in real time in my viewport. The next thing I'm gonna do, let's just scroll down here. Let's just play around more with this mask random. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I think what I might do is just keep this at, let's try 0.65. Okay, let's keep it at a value like this. All right, so let's close out this video here. And in the next video, we are going to create another version of this shape splatter to add some even smaller detail.